हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे इज एन ओरिजिनल ब्यूटिफुल Darshan of Sri Govinda Dave, 1974, Henry Street, Brooklyn. You can see his turban is very artistic and his face painting excellent and perfect. Beautiful, simple, neat, opulent. We recommend this highly. Uh, we're not starting our own trends. We're not creating our own concoctions. We're following in the footsteps of some very artistic, wonderful devotees who first received the deities in 1972. Henry Street had a lot of very great artists. Uh, Murli Dar Prabhu was there. Uh, Bardaraj Prabhu was there very, very often. Parikit Prabhu, uh, Jadarani Mataji, others were there. So there was a lot of artistic direction taking place. We recommend uh, this off-center wrap, which is very elegant and sophisticated, and this type of tilak, very, very gorgeous and attractive. So here, just fast forward now, this is 2018. It's a flower dress on Sri Sri Radha Govinda. I helped with this turban. Very, very attractive, off-center, as you saw earlier, uh, asymmetrical. That means if the tilak is the center line, then on both sides of the tilak, the cloth is wrapped slightly differently, and it gives a very, very asymmetrical, uh, sophisticated look. And as you see, the beautiful face painting in the original traditional design of Sri Govindadev in Jaipur Dam at the wonderful Govindadev Mandir, which has been there over 300 years. Uh, I met with the sole trustee. He informed me that a lot of these designs are remaining in books that they have for their reference, and they're very, very authentic. Here's a picture of a dressing I did approximately 1988. And I was following in those footsteps, just starting out to some degree. And that beautiful pearl crown, very, very opulent. We need opulence added to the neatness and the simplicity to instill that awe and veneration. And these little uh, designs on Krishna's face in the mood of the Govinda Dev Mandir, very, very attractive. You see the beautiful fragrant flowers. We use gardenia, uh, hyacinth, roses, stephanotis, orchids, many, many wonderful fragrant and beautiful flowers offered to Srila Govinda Deva for his gorgeous darshans and one beautiful peacock feather standing straight up. It looks very good like that. Here's a gorgeous depiction. Srimati Radharani, the queen of Vrindavan, perhaps the most beautiful Srimati Radharani in this world and on, in this whole universe. Especially, I bring your attention to her hairline. Her hairline is as Prabhupada recommended on Henry Street. Her hair should be shown. It's very beautiful, is what he told the devotees. He took a darshan where Radharani's hair was basically hidden. He didn't like that, so he recommend you show Radharani's hair. So I worked with other pujaris of that time, and this is the standard that was established. Very, very artistic. We showed the front of her hair, perhaps an inch to an inch and a half, uh, in front of her tikka, and behind her tikka, another couple inches. Even if we don't have a braid, although today we have a braid, but even without a braid, it reveals her hairline. This is from the profile on the side. So you could see there's about an inch in the front of the tikka, and then about two inches behind the tikka before the veil trim starts. 
It's very, very gorgeous and attractive and chaste at the same time. And look at those giant gardenias, this very, very luxurious and fragrant for Srimati Radharani to enjoy. And those purple poppy flowers, very, very artistic and attractive to apply. On the far left, you see the purple and light pink ostrich feather. Ostrich feather plumes were authorized by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada in a letter of inquiry from His Holiness Adi Keshava Swami. Srila Prabhupada said, what is the problem? It is simply for the decoration. Yes, you can use the ostrich feathers. This darshan, I wanted to do this for many years. Finally, a donor came forward and gave over $3,000. These are triple A, select grade, the largest, most fragrant gardenias from the number one greenhouse in the state of California. There was over 500 of them in this dress on Sri Krishna Janmashtami. When the curtain opened at the initial darshan at the greeting of the deity in the late afternoon, the temple room in New York, which is 5,000 square feet, it's the size of Radhamadava's temple room practically, the entire temple room was permeated with the sweet, all attractive, super fragrance of gardenias offered in such abundance to the lotus feet, to the faces, to the entire flower dress of Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev. Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev Ki Jai. He is a beautiful depiction of Srimati Radharani. Again, I'd like to bring her hairline to your focus. There's no braid today, and her hairline is very, very beautiful. Here I'm revealing a little more of her hair, perhaps three full inches. And you notice her hair comes out to the outside of her eyebrows, the outer edge of each eye. It looks, at one sense, it's very confidential. In another sense also, it's extremely chaste. And third thing, you still see her beautiful hair. I'm noticing in some places they're trying to do this, but they're not going all the way. They only reveal about a half inch. You must reveal at least one inch, two inches in the front. Srila Prabhupada stated that Srimati Radharani should always appear more beautiful than Krishna. In this way, Krishna will always be attracted and never leave that place. Here we have about an inch revealed in the front in this beautiful depiction of Srimati Radharani. Now this day, I felt a little spontaneous, so I decorated her beautiful headdress with that beautiful yellow hyacinth, fra very fragrant hyacinth garland. I brought it to one side only. On the other side, I supplemented the space with a beautiful large crystal brooch with some small peacock feathers. Raghunath Das Goswami, great uh, charger, stated that Srimati Radharani wears peacock feathers in her braid. And so we follow in those footsteps, and it's very, very gorgeous flower garland, the two orange flares of silk cloth, the chandrika and the tika at the bottom, revealing her hairline. We recommend this for everyone. Here's a beautiful blessing from Srimati Radharani. May Srimati Radharani and her blessings enter your consciousness forever and ever. Now here are those original face painting designs of Sri Govinda Deva, of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada in Jaipur Dham. These are not concoctions. These were not invented uh, by someone that's halfway decent artist. These were put down centuries ago. This is authentic, traditional, authorized designs that Sri Govinda Dev is applied in Jaipur Dham, and we follow in their footsteps, and we offer them the greatest respect and thanks for allowing us. We showed this to the sole trustee. So welcome to the Art of Deity Dressing, especially this presentation, is a, regarding the Govinda Deva Turban Seminar. Our philosophy is meticulous, neat, simple, 
and opulent in proper proportion can lead to an elegant darshan. The Art of Deity Dressing Govinda David Turban Seminar is presented for your rapid advancement and ease at wrapping gorgeous, beautiful turbans on Krishna. Fortunately, uh, we were blessed by the Vaishnavas, Sri Sri Gornatai, Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva, to have the uh, once in a lifetime opportunity to have served our spiritual master uh, by decorating and dressing the most beautiful, beloved Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva more than 10,000 times. And I must admit, it wasn't immediately that I was able to achieve my ultimate goals of meticulous neatness and simplicity and opulence in proper proportion. After some years, possibly half of my career of 10,000 dressings, my skills started to increase through vast training from various Vaishnavas who were very, very kind and wonderful in leading my way on the path of the art of deity dressing. We'd like to thank them very much. So today I've selected a segment from this wonderful deity seminar uh, dressing of Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva and especially will concentrate on the turban of Srila Govinda Deva, his whole headdress uh, application, and of course Srimati Radharani's headdress application also. So in the heart Devotees want to dress the deity like this, this beautiful picture depicting Bhagavan Sri Krishna, the eternal youth. This is a very advanced stage of deity dressing and deity worship, and we will speak about that during this presentation. Very important part of the headdress and the decorations of the beautiful lotus face of the Lord is tremendous authentic, traditional face designs in Chandan uh, going back hundreds of years. Replicas of the famous Govinda Dev, Jaipur Mandir. We're very, very happy to see these beautiful designs and we thank the devotees that we engaged in leading the way, keeping up this great tradition, this great Vaishnava tradition of the transcendental face painting of Srila Govinda Deva. So now we're ready to apply Govinda Deva's hair in a meticulous, neat, simple, and opulent, proper proportion, standard. Krishna's hair is perhaps the most important element, needing the most meticulous perfection of application. Sloppy, disheveled hair can destroy a darshan, whereas meticulously, perfectly applied hair on Lord Krishna can stun a darshan audience. So you saw we put Govinda Dev's hair on. I put both hands behind his head and pulled one half to the left and one hand to the right. In general, his hair is fixed in a very symmetrical way, meaning balanced on both sides of his center line where the tilak goes down his head. But before I fix the hair and the curls in place, I find it's highly recommended to wrap the turban cloths first. So here I'll be wrapping two primary turban cloths and a, and a main reason for wrapping the turban cloths first is that in the course of wrapping the turban cloths you may mess up his hair a little bit and then you have to just redo it anyway. So better to get the turban cloth on and then completely fix the deity's hair, Krishna's hair. So as you see my fingers moving Keep a close eye on the, my hands, the dexterity within my hands, the ease of use. Uh, and of course, these videos were shot well after 10,000 deity dressings of Radha Govinda Deva. So I, I like the turban to be wrapped asymmetrically. 
the hair symmetrical, balanced on each side, the turban asymmetrical, meaning that one side of the middle line will be in one style and the other side may have slightly different style, meaning different pieces, more pieces, less pieces, like that. So this off-center wrap is nothing new. It was done in the earliest years of uh, deity worship, starting at 1970 and 71, 72, when many big deities were sent around the world by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Now you see in the second piece of cloth, the yellow, is sort of a, a very lightweight see-through cloth, very ethereal, and I'm going to wrap it, as I did the orange one, by putting it in place. It's an off-center wrap, so on, it'll be on the left side of Govindadev's tilak that the two cloths, the orange and the yellow, will meet up high on his hairline. And as I'm doing with the did with the orange, I'm I'm doing this here. Proper handling of the pin is a must to be learned, and always applied with utmost caution. So it only took me one pin to put that orange piece of silk on Govindadev's head. Now it'll only take one pin for the yellow piece, and I do it in the back. I pull the piece tight. I take one pin. I put it through the yellow piece on one side. Go through it and twist it back into itself and I have a very tight bond. That's not moving. So I use two pins for that whole procedure, the orange and the yellow cloth. And now you see I'm doing it off center. You see the orange piece is sloping up, sloping up past the T-lock. That means it's going asymmetrical, off center. In traditional families in India, and especially in the higher castes, you'll see the gentlemen, or sometimes the Maharajas, uh, do the off-center wrap. It's a sophisticated, elegant look. And I, as I said, it was done in the very early years. Uh, I have photographs, Govindadev and Henry Street, starting in 1972. We had Rukmini Dwarkadish in 1970 in Los Angeles, along with Radha Londonishwara, in 69 or 70 in London. Some cloth may slope easier than others, but nonetheless, you should try to get a sloping curve. Now you're seeing my adjustment of Govindadev's hair in a very meticulous, neat fashion, get, gathering as many curls as I can in, in a very uniform, not overly done way, proper size, proper proportion, just resting on his upper shoulder, not going down too low and in proportion to his face and size of head. So that's what you have to evaluate. A lot of times I see turbans being wrapped in many locations where at the end of the turban wrap, the turban and the hair included, things like that, are, are six, seven times, I've seen as much as eight times the size of the deity's face, which I believe is highly inappropriate. It's not done in proportion. When we're talking about proper proportion, we're especially talking about taking into consideration the height from the lotus feet to the top of the head of your deity. And also, the second consideration for proper proportion is the size of the deity's head and face. So as you can see, I'm being meticulous, meticulously neat, applying with patience. You have to have patience to do this. This entire fixing of the hair took me it, it might have been close to two minutes in a very balanced, very, very symmetrical way. Both sides looking very, very similar. So occasionally you must step back, take perspective and strive for perfection in your deity dressing. You must step back during the course of a full dressing like this one, for instance. I might have st stepped back 10, 12 times to make sure a particular application was as perfect as I could possibly get it. If it wasn't, I would go back at it and get it more perfect until I was satisfied. Now we're going to show the hand pleating, hand pleating of this turban cloth to make what we call flares. A flare in art is an extension, for instance, in cloth, it's an extension of the cloth to add an embellishment of artistic design. So that's what we're doing with these flares. And as you saw, I did that very fast. I, 
I think it took me 10 seconds to pleat that. Now I'm only pinning from the back. I never pin from the front. Because when you pin from the front, you invariably see the head of the pin, the plastic head, and you don't know if it's going into the turban and hitting the DT in the head. It must be done with great caution. So now I'm bringing one more. There's enough cloth to do a second flare. And I'm going to add it to that same side, that right side as you're looking of Govinda Dev's face. I bring it down near the eyes, going up onto the turban at that point. This one, I'll raise it up just a little higher. If you look closely, the form of it, it's very easy to get. This pleading is very simple. A 10 or 12 year old child can do this very easily. I'm very confident that if I taught 10 children, 10 to 12 years old, how to do this, they would do it as good as I'm getting it. At least 90% of them would, easily. It's a very simple task. Some of the other things I've seen tried are more complicated, and while they can be done good by the few, the, the vast majority of those who uh, try to imitate or copy have a very difficult time, and it doesn't come out good. It looks very, very uh, disheveled, sloppy. It's unbecoming for the deity. Now I'm doing a piece of flare on the opposite side out of a gr matching green cloth to add some contrast. So I offered two pieces on the right, one on the left. That's asymmetrical. So with the turban cloth flares complete, meticulous, neat, simple, proper proportion, so easy, even a young child can be trained and do this just as good. Very simple, look at that. It's very simple. And that is enough cloth on the, on the turban for Krishna because now we should be adding the traditional mukut pieces, here they are. The mukut pieces, maybe a few jewels, and a few feathers, peacock feather. Srila Prabhupada authorized ostrich feathers to be used in one letter to uh, Adi Keshava Swami. And we should have a nice balance. It shouldn't be so many places they're just using all cloth, all cloth. They want to go back to that picture of Krishna I showed you in the beginning of the seminar. They want to jump right ahead to Raganuga. That's what it's about. But we're a little bit required to train others and especially new devotees are starting at a certain level and they should observe the regular standards of dressing the deity and that means a mood of awe and reverence and especially the addition of opulence the opulence is what induces a little bit of the awe and reverence turban should have an equal balance of cloth turban mukut pieces beautiful flower decorations, a few jewels, possibly a few beautiful feathers. It shouldn't just be overly done with cloth, like 75% cloth, 85% cloth. So a correct application of the Chandrika type Govinda Dev turban mukut piece. This, see the piece that's on right around? This piece is similar. But do you notice it has its curve going towards Radharani? That curve in the piece is called a mango. It's a mango. The same in Radharani's golden one. The curve towards Govinda is a mango. They always go in this direction towards each other. I've seen in many, many locations. They don't know what to do with that piece. I have it very nicely placed, straight up. It's almost like emblematic of, of the royalty. It's an element that would be on their crown. And it keeps the pieces in place very easily. Regarding turban pieces, they should be standing erect, not flopping back too much, not flopping forward. Erect. On the same plane. These pieces are kundalas, earrings. They go on both sides, usually attached to the turban. But because today I have put the uh, flares of cloth there, 
I didn't want to disturb that, but I just wanted you to see that. Kundalas. As long as Krishna has earrings on his earlobes, and I do have those on, jeweled earrings, then that you, you're, you're fulfilling the standard requirement. And the kundalas look very special, though, on turbans, even on mokut crowns. Now I'm placing some more turban pieces, some with peacock feathers. Now I'll be, I'll be pointing to the desired shape of the frontal turban area, see? It's going from the outside of the eyebrow to the other outside in sort of rounded proportions, about two and a half to three inches high. That's all the cloth you really need to see at the end of the turban wrap. You could make it all the way up to the top, but it has a completely different look. It doesn't have this look uh, of Krishna's sort of you know, suave, debonair, sophisticated. Our goal in wrapping beautiful turbans should be to make Krishna look much more beautiful, not sloppy, imbalanced, disheveled. It's an embarrassment for the deity, for the stature of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So I've always tried to do that. I wanted to bring out the most attractive qualities in Krishna and misapplication of a turban mukut piece which uh, after taking perspective I will remove later. That, that piece right there that I'm now putting on is a mistake. And later you'll see, in about a minute you'll see why I say it's a mistake. And also you see I'm doing it from the side, just a little through the turban cloth and it keeps it in place with a pin. So now I have those two there, but I have exactly in the same spot on the opposite side, I have two similar mukut pieces. I felt, here's the peacock feather by the way, which is a standard required piece of article that has to be offered to Krishna. Whether it's on a turban or a crown, it has to have a peacock feather, at least one. So, when you see the other side and you see the frontal camera vision right there, you see two peacock pieces on both sides, they sort of gave it a much more symmetrical look, almost like big ears, big ears on a person. I didn't want that kind of look. So I simply removed one piece and that solved the problem. So now it's asymmetrical. It has the flares coming out in front of the other piece in the, in the right side. Now these little star pieces that you're seeing, these are custom Mukut stars, and they're specially utilized uh, as a filler in smaller size openings, and to build the turban up in the back, in, uh, they come in three different sizes, small, medium, a little bit larger, and the original designer of these was a famous Pujari from Vrindavan, Omkar. Omkar Prabhu was a very famous Pujari in the late 70s all the way to the mid 80s. He was a great designer. At that time, he was running a Mukut shop. He was a great designer. And uh, he came out with these stars in gold and silver. I increased on it a little. I added uh, white crystal. So I have three types of sets I had. You see, they're different sizes. And they can be put in, in random places uh, asymmetrically all over the turban. They're very opulent looking. And uh, they, they, they hold up for a long, long time and uh, they're custom made in Vrindavan, not expensive. I recommend all the temples have, a, have a, a jewel like this that they put on turbans regularly. And, and learn this technique of getting, you have to know what you want as a result of your dressing. That's why I'm pointing to the front, you see the two and a half inches, approximately three inches on one side coming up of cloth. And I have yet to add flowers. When I add the flowers, I'll go into some of those spaces so they're not as prominent. And that even adds a, f a further embellishment to the whole overall turban wrap. So here's an effulgence that's called Tej Kiran. The Tej Kiran, the effulgence, is generally a standard article, yet numerous temples that I have seen do not offer Krishna an effulgence. Sometimes it's because they say they don't have a place to hang a wire, which I find a little difficult because where there's a will there's a way. We, we simply hung a metal wire on the inside of the altar all the way across at that particular point 
right behind the Didi's at the back of the Didi head. Radharani's has no wire at all, just rests on her head. But in case we need one wire, it's there. It's a light gauge test, so from the temple room, you don't even see it. And it's very rapid. Even you can use a small, small eye hook. Mostly, a lot of the altars are carved out of wood, so it shouldn't be a problem. Step back, take perspective, strive for perfection. Like I just saw me reach up to touch the hair again. I'm constantly looking, how can I make it better? How can I make it better? How can I make it better? So today, you've just seen the turban wrap, we'll be doing the flowers now, but I'm also showing you here a special Srimati Radharani headdress application where I occasionally, this isn't something I want to do regularly, but you know, maybe every two months, five times a year, six times a year. I'm, as you see, I'm doing a similar golden flares on her headdress, one on one side, one a little higher on the other side to come out. And now I'll be decorating with the flowers. And I'm starting on Srimati Radharani with a decoration-based flower called Jip, Gypsophilia. In the flower markets, they call it baby's breath. It has a very sort of ethereal, esoteric look. It just sticks in place very good in little clusters, and it creates a great base that holds other flowers without even using pins. I don't use any pins with the Jip. And it lasts for many hours during the day. It creates a very artistic, ethereal, type look almost, it's, a, it's an effulgence type look that you get when you take the darshan. So I'm doing that on Radharani first. I'll apply it also in, to some degree for Govinda Deva, and then start using some wonderful decoration flowers on the headdresses. As you can notice, those two beautiful little yellow Narcissus garlands adorning the deity's uh, neck area. They're the most fragrant, fragrant, sweetly perfumed flowers. They're on par with jasmine, parijata, champak. They're up there with gardenia, but with a much even more sweet fragrance. Very lightweight. Each one of those garlands maybe weighs an ounce, an ounce and a quarter, maybe one ounce. And they're placed very gently. We, we let the deity smell them first. Why? Because in the Shastra it stated, that fragrant flowers are more pleasing to Govinda Deva than the offering of silver, gold, and jewels. So, but Krishna loves the fragrance of sweet flowers being offered to him with uh, devotion. As you see, I'm using in few, just one little pin right through the stem in the back into, into another flower on the, on the garland so it doesn't move around. And then when I offer them to the deity, to the lotus face of the deity, so, they, so the deity can enjoy and smell them, then I keep them placed up near the deity's lotus face. As you see, I'm putting the second one on Govinda Dev. Radharani has one on her side also. So th these are very, very fragrant gardenias. They're select grade triple A from Greenhouse in California. Offering a nice rose flower first to Govinda Dev's hand. He could have during his flute play so he could offer it to all of his friends. Now here also I have some stems of that very fragrant Narcissus flower. So as I was moving along I thought, well, Krishna may, may want to enjoy that fragrance all day uh, and share it with his friends up in up near his lotus nose. So I placed it right in his hands. So he could just, anytime he wants, he could just take a deep inhale of that most fragrant uh, Narcissus flower. I recommend 
all farm communities, all Vaishnava farm communities, to put up a greenhouse for your deity and grow fragrant flowers. They all grow on bulbs. You have Narcissus, Gardenia, uh, Stephanotis, uh, Hyacinth, Freesia, F-R-E-S-I-A. Freesia is very fragrant. There's so many fragrant flowers that you could be growing for your deity. And it's the highest standard when you grow your own flowers for the deity. Now we're offering some eucalyptus on Govinda Dev's turban. Eucalyptus is very purifying and has a very unique aroma. Srila Prabhupada liked eucalyptus. By the way, it can be made into a toothbrush. If you strip the leaves off a five inch segment of, with a medium sized stem, soak that stem in pure water overnight, then smash one end with like a, a clean hammer or some device like that and place it on a tray, it could be used as the toothbrush when you wake the deity in the afternoon especially. It's one of the articles that can be offered. The Siddhapakul tree, the famous tree of Haridas Thakur and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu getting the toothbrush from the afternoon darshan of Jagannath Dev, which was from a Bakul twig. He then planted that twig and it became famous grew into the Siddhavakul tree. So as we're seeing here, there's some uh, finishing touches that we're making right now. Uh, some few little flowers that we're adding to fill in any of the spaces we see as a possible distraction. You have to always look for that. Sometimes you may be dressing the deity and you're looking, you overlook everything right before the darshan you may see something went too low near the deity's eye and is casting a shadow. It's casting a shadow in the deity eye. You have to fix that immediately. You want to be very, very careful right before the darshan to look for anything that would be a distraction, anything that would take away from the darshan viewers, uh, smaranam, his, their complete absorption in the beautiful lotus feet and lotus features, the beautiful faces, the beautiful dressing of the deity. You want them to be able to pray stunned with their hearts open up and they desire to engage in menial, loving, devotional service at the lotus feet of their spiritual master, Sri Sri Gornitai and Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva. So as you can see, I'm adding some to fill some of those front openings on the turban. All I'm using is little little pins. I'm going to the back of the flower and coming back out with the pin so I could feel everything. There's one behind. I won't cover anything up with another article I'm applying. I try to make everything visible at the end. All the way to the end, I will keep moving and doing things and trying to improve striving for perfection for Krishna. We want Krishna. He's, he's the meticulous dresser. He even gets fixes his belt when he goes out to fight with the demon Aristasura. He's very meticulous. So I've always had that desire to dress Krishna and Radharani in a very meticulous, neat, simple, opulent, standard in proper proportion to their size. So we would like to thank very, very much for His mercy and kindness, His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, our eternal spiritual master, for allowing us the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, the great mercy of dressing and decorating Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva more than 21,000 times. We thank Srila Prabhupada very much for this special privilege. It was a wonderful experience. We hope we pleased him at least a little bit, even a small amount. That was our goal. We offered over 350 beautiful dresses to Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva over a 38-year period. We offered so many wonderful and fragrant flowers like gardenia, narcissus, champak, jasmine, hyacinth, tuberose, roses, stephanotis, so many flowers we offered. 
I could not even tell you how much they cost. Boga offerings were made by wonderful Vaishnava devotees who we thank very, very much. And we always kept to the strict original standard Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva had on Henry Street and West 55th Street for all of the Boga offerings. So now we're taking a final perspective review of this turban seminar. You see here beautiful Chandrika of Srimati Radharani and the piece on Govinda's turban tilting towards Radharani, the mango tilting toward her. Radharani's uh, necklaces, you will notice perfect symmetrical application of the necklaces. Very, very neat, evenly separated. Beautiful, custom-made belts, chokers, bracelets, anklets. Our mood was increase, increase, increase. Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva's standard of excellence, of wonderful articles being offered. Satin silk for Sri Sri Radha Govinda Deva. So these are the traditional standard designs of Chandan face painting of Govinda Dev, the original deity of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. As they say, copy success. I'm sure Krishna would be very, very happy. Srila Prabhupada said in Jaipur in 1972, February, when Radha Govinda Dev from New York first came and he had them on the altar, he said, our Radha Govinda Deva are a reflection of the original Govinda Deva of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. So finally, we'll finish up once again with this beautiful, very beautiful painting of Bhagavan Sri Krishna and the very, very esoteric Raghunuga Bhakti turban. This is the goal. I will explain in future seminars where in the beginning stages, it's just not very easy to just jump ahead and do something like that. Pujaris, especially in their early years, may not have the expertise to accomplish copying something as this beautiful depiction of Sri Krishna shows. Therefore, substantial training is required before anyone tries to jump ahead and potentially achieve a dressing like this or darshan like this turban on Krishna, basically a Raganuga dressing. Therefore, we should practice and take the guidance from those who are more expert. Practice, practice, practice. Gradually, you will become very, very expert. And then you could try so many wonderful, beautiful decorations on your gorgeous, most beautiful, all-attractive deity. These things are here to show us the ultimate standard, the ultimate goal. But of course, we are doing the worship in awe and veneration. So we have to add the opulence. It's that simple. So we appreciate uh, your viewing this Art of Deity Dressing Turban Application Seminar. You can go through it again and again, stop, fast forward. You have complete control over it. Copy that turban at home. Copy that turban on the altar. Learn how to do those pleated flares. I promise you, you will be successful. So thank you very, very much. All glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, Sri Sri Gornitai, Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev. Hare Krishna. Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare 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 H